Welcome to the latest episode of the Edgar Rice Burroughs mini podcast. These short podcasts are meant to supplement the full length episodes that I do with Scott Stewart and Jess Terrell, in which we generally talk about one of Edgar Rice Burroughs books in detail. My name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books about what I call pre-digital pop culture, things like the pulp magazines that Burroughs was published in, old-time radio, classic comic books, old uh, B-movies, and so on. And I keep a blog about such things at comics, old-time radio, and other cool stuff. Right now, we're using the mini-podcast to do a chapter-by-chapter summary of the 1912 novel A Princess of Mars. Please note that we will be including spoilers both in, uh, regarding the chapter that we're discussing today and for the rest of the book and possibly for other books in the series. I would also recommend that you reread today's chapter before listening to the podcast, as I will be assuming that you are familiar with the events we are discussing. So today we're going to be finishing up the book with a look at chapters 27 and 28. And we cover 10 years of marital happiness pretty quickly which is really just as well. Adventure heroes are rarely interesting unless horrible, horrible things are happening to them. We also discover that John and Deja are expecting a baby, which, because this is Mars, is incubating in an egg. Exactly how Martian physiology works, and also how it works in tandem with Earth physiology, is never discussed in detail. I mean, when they mate, do they, well, anyway, I really don't want to know. And the story works just fine if we simply go with it. By the way, the excellent John Carter comic book series published by Marvel Comics in the late 1970s was set during this 10-year period. So in, what that, in that continuity, at least, John Carter and Tars Tarkas were still having a lot of awesome adventures. Anyway, things go badly awry when the atmosphere plant stops working, and the one guy who can unlock the doors is found murdered. The people of Helium settle down to await death with dignity, which is another nice moment in the book. My wife Angela, though, calls out John Carter here. He really should have not needed days waiting until the literal last moment before remembering that he had learned how to open those doors telepathically back in chapter 20. And I think I have to back her up on this one. I mean, gee whiz, John, shouldn't that have been the first thing you thought of when the atmosphere plant troubles were first mentioned? I do like the little touches of uh, verisimilitude and his race to the tr- to the uh, to the atmosphere planet uh, plant. Things like having to stay low to the ground because air pressure at higher altitudes has already dropped too low to breathe. Burroughs brings the novel to a close with a major cliffhanger. John Carter, at his presumed moment of death, finds himself back on Earth in that same cave where he lost consciousness 20 years earlier finally seeing the mummified remains of a woman and the skeletons that frightened off the Apaches uh, when he first teleported to Mars. Um, It it was 10 years earlier. I said 20. At this point, it was 10 years earlier. He had no idea if the atmosphere plant was turned back on in time. No idea if his wife, an unborn or unhatched child, was still alive. And of course they are. After 10 years on Earth, it's pretty safely implied that John Carter gets teleported back to Mars. And of course, it would be no fun if he popped up on a dead world and uh, asphyxiated immediately. The series would continue uh, with the 1913 novel, The Gods of Mars. And that's it for A Princess of Mars. It's a wonderful adventure novel that covers themes like honor, courage, loyalty, friendship, and compassion. It's, it, 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 it so successfully and vividly creates its version of Mars that many of us secretly suspect it's a true story, and the various Mars probes we've sent uh, there simply haven't stumbled across the interesting parts yet. If any of you would like to uh, to see another Burroughs book covered on this chapter-by-chapter basis in the mini-podcast, please feel free to leave a comment on any of the platforms we post these on and let us know. That's it for now. Once again, my name is Tim DeForest. Please visit my blog at Comics Old Time Radio and other cool stuff. You'll also be able to find links to my Amazon.com author page there. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with another uh, mini podcast soon. And keep an ear out also for our full-length episodes.